Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Angela, and today we're going to be chatting about really random book recommendations, and I wanted a space to share them, so I'm just going to be using this little mini series to share books that I've read in the past that I just want to talk about. We have a YA contemporary, we have fantasy, we have nonfiction, and I'm really excited to be sharing all of these with you, so let's jump straight into the video. So the first book that I'm going to be talking about is this beast over here, and that is The Thirteen and a Half Lives of Captain Blue Bear. And this is a behemoth of a novel. It is so big, but 100 of these pages are illustrations. It is a epic fantasy that is somewhere between Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and Shel Silverstein's art style illustrations. And I had so much fun reading this. A Blue Bear has 27 lives, and our narrator is a slightly cocky and also absolutely adorable Blue Bear, and he decides to recount 13 and a half of them. This is a satirical fantasy that twists and turns and squeezes tropes and you go on this epic adventure that ranges from mini pirates to a school to a spider witch and it is so much fun. This is a standalone fantasy though there are other books set in this world of Zimonia and it's very nonsensical at times but it's done in this very creative way. There is no overarching plot but there are lots of subplots and stories that kind of loop back and reference each other. Overall the book is more of a reflection of life itself. The story is rambling and moves this way and that and the characters are absurd and interesting and it feels like the author has dared to bring a childlike imagination to his storytelling which I absolutely loved. And that being said this book has a very specific kind of humor. It is not laugh out loud funny but it is amusing in terms of the characterization and the wordplay and the cleverness of the story itself and at times it can feel a little bit cumbersome and I wonder if it could be cut down. I found myself debating between yes or no and while parts of this book moved rather sluggishly I felt delighted that I got to stay in this world for a little bit longer and I could be immersed in the true absurdity of this story. It is quite absurd in absolutely the best way possible. Reading the 13 and a half lives of Captain Blue Bear is a complete experience in terms of the world building and the storytelling and all the little details that are in this book. The little details are what make this book come to life and I absolutely love loved it. So the next book that I want to talk about is The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. I am such a big Elizabeth Acevedo fan. I love all of her books. I think she is such a wordsmith and she is an incredible writer. The Poet X is a YA contemporary novel that follows Xiomara Batista who pours her angers, frustrations, passions into words on paper. Xiomara's voice is so strong and unique. Her struggles with accepting her body, accepting her faith, accepting her journey to life is so tangible and the characters in this book are just as lush as the writing. This book is an absolute work of art. I highly recommend listening to the audiobook. Elizabeth Acevedo narrates it herself and you will absolutely fall in love with her writing style because she is such an incredible poet and writer and I'm just completely blown away by her sheer talent every time I read something by her. That being said, I do think that while this book is YA, it is for older readers. It does have some mature content and themes. I do feel that the ending was very weirdly wrapped up. It was so neat. It was just so perfectly wrapped up and I do think that was damaging a little bit for the overall story, especially in regards to one of the heavier topics that's explored, which is abusive relationships. While there are mixed messages in this book and the ending does send a bit of a mixed message, I do think that the writing is an exploration of itself and it's one that I just really recommend for the storytelling and the writing alone. This book explores so many topics and themes with an incredible amount of eloquence. I am still completely blown away. It has been well over a year since I've read it and I am still blown away by this book because there is not a single word that is out of place. Everything in terms of the writing is literally perfect. Every word is so specifically chosen. Every metaphor is so deliberate and it just feels like perfection in terms of the writing. I love Elizabeth Acevedo's writing so much. I cannot gush about it enough and I highly, highly recommend this book. 
I want to recommend is Midnight in Mexico by Alfredo Corchado. Alfredo Corchado, a Mexican-American borderlands journalist, pulls us into his Mexico, a Mexico that he loves and cares for deeply. His dogged determination to cover Mexico has earned him multiple journalism awards, and Midnight in Mexico is his memoir more than anything. I've seen a couple places that describe it as a political thriller. It is not that at all. It is very much a memoir through and through. It's hard to describe how I feel about Midnight in Mexico in words. While it sweeps over drug cartels, corruption, organized crime, it's written through the intimate lens of a Mexican-American journalist who has hope for its roots yet is torn by the state Mexico is in. And despite all the heaviness of this book, especially towards the end, it painted a portrait of Mexico that felt raw and honest. And I got a taste of the Mexico that we don't see as tourists because although the perspective is very biased, it felt very authentic and very personal. And for that reason alone, I do highly recommend this book. So American Panda might just be one of the most underrated YA contemporary books of all time. This book follows a Taiwanese-American teenager, May, who's a freshman at MIT. May's parents want her to become a doctor and marry a Taiwanese Ivy Leaguer, but she has a crush on Darren, who is definitely not Taiwanese, and she's also a germaphobe, which kind of foils their plan to make her into a doctor. <laughs> so in this book, May reconnects with her older brother, Shink, who has been axed from the family because he dated a girl that his parents didn't approve of. And ultimately, this book is about being brave, finding truths, being strong, and learning to be unafraid to be yourself. What I loved about this book is that it's so intimate that you can clearly tell that it's based on Gloria Chow's own experiences. It's an absolutely beautiful coming of age story and everything from the setting, the MIT campus, to the cultural immersion felt so brutally real. This book has very complicated family relationships and they are very well fleshed out. The story is sad but it's also incredibly heartwarming and uplifting and I highly recommend it. This book is an absolute character study of May and I loved its sole focus on one character. The minor characters didn't really take away from her storyline. They weren't the most developed but they also weren't really underdeveloped either. They were there to move May's story and journey forward but not in a way that made me feel like the book itself was less fleshed out and I absolutely love that aspect of this book. I think it's a wonderful debut by an author and I really hope she has other works in the future because I would love to read them. So those are my five book recommendations. Let me know what books you recommend in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Bye guys!